You know it? You love it. Rome, but not the city. The Roman Empire, a great nation that lasted for centuries. But how did it fall? Well, let me explain. Rome was founded in 753 BC by two brothers, Romulus and Remus, who were the sons of the Roman god of war, Mise. In the beginning, the brothers were left to drown on the river Tiber by a king, but rescued by a seawolf. Once the twins grew up, they defeated the king and founded Rome, a beautiful walled city where everyone was happy, but they couldn't decide who should be the king. I'm the king. No, I'm the king. I'm the king. No, I'm the king. Fine. You be the king here, and I'm just gonna jump over this wall and be king over there. Don't you dare. Why not? That's my wall. Oh, yeah? <laughs> How dare you jump over my beautiful wall? Ah, you impaled me. Uh, I smell pie. No one jumps over the king's wall. After six more kings who each brought something of value to Rome, the Roman Republic was founded. But what happened to the kings? Well, the people of Rome overthrew the seventh king Superbus because he was a big meanie. The Republic was then founded to make sure that no one man should have all that power and that the clock would be ticking, they're just counting the hours. They elected two leaders called consuls who shared power equally. The Republic engaged in many wars and greatly expanded Rome's territory, and this led to the Republic lasting for centuries from 509 BC to 27 BC. But why did it end? Well, with Rome's expansion came increased population, and with increased population came increased income gaps, and with increased income gaps came increased problems, and with increased... You get the point. Rome was not too big to fail. Kinda like a bank. The increased tensions in Rome led to reform movements led by Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus, who were both killed for leading these reform movements. Wait, why? Because they redistributed land from the rich to the poor, and this was a big no-no. But these reforms did help the Republic remain intact for a few more years until one pizza chain decided to show up and ruin everything. But before we get into more detail, you need to note these three people. Julius Caesar had become a star in the military for his efforts in Spain. Marcus Licinius Crassus suppressed a slave rebellion in Spartacus, and Pompey fought in one against pirates in the Mediterranean and was married to Caesar's daughter. These three formed an uneasy alliance called the First Triumvirate. Caesar had just conquered Gaul for the Republic and he ruled Rome as alongside Crassus and Pompey, but once Caesar's daughter and Crassus died, old-style Roman politics were thrown out the window and Pompey decided to become sole Roman consul. He did what? Stepped in as sole Roman consul. He can't do that. He just did. Guards, kill this man. Wait, what did I do? All right, if Pompey wants to go, let's go. Boys, pack it up. We're invading Italy. Caesar crossing the Rubicon River into Italy triggered a civil war in which Caesar won, declaring himself dictator for life. Man, I'm scared. I thought we were supposed to make sure that no one man should have all that power. Look, the clock's not even ticking. How can we count to hours? I bet they'll tell us to stop tripping. Dude, shut up. Caesar's outside, okay? And let's kill him. Let's what? You heard me. Hey, Caesar. What, citizen? Look, freshly baked pie over there. Ooh, pizza pie. Huh, you impaled me. Ah. I smell pie. Hold on. Are we learning the whole history of Rome? Well, yes, but it's a lot more complicated than what we just went over. But I thought this video was about the fall of Rome. Yes, it is. But in order to understand why it fell, you have to understand the events that led up to it. So yes, we must summarize Roman history first. Fine by me. After Caesar died, he was eventually replaced by his great nephew Augustus, who became the first emperor of Rome. Augustus brought peace to Rome and allowed for two full centuries of peace known as Pax Romana. Ah, what a nice day. The sun is out, the toilets are filled, and I have my cabbages. Hey, who are you? You want my cabbages? Only two. I'm that really long tree. The guy who makes this video possible. As you can tell, I make art on my channel and also the art for these videos. I even have a, a video of me making art for the last one. So, subscribe to me if you want, and let's get back to the video. Two things. One, what in the world are you talking about? Two, you didn't want my cabbages? No. Can you believe that he didn't want my cabbages? Hey, my cabbages! Augustus' dynasty included four more emperors, Tiberius, Caligula, Kanye, and ended with Nero. Nero was not fit for emperor and spent all the money from the Roman treasury, which led to him wearing concrete shoes. 
In the year after Nero's death, there were four new emperors, but the most important is the last one, Vespasian. Vespasian was the first of three emperors known as the Flavians, the second of which, Titus, handled the aftermath of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which famously destroyed Pompeii. The final Flavian, Domitian, was replaced by Nerva, who ushered in another century of Roman prosperity with four emperors who each brought something of value to Rome. Trajan expanded Rome's territory to its greatest extent. Hadrian built the famous Hadrian Wall in Berlin. I mean, Britain. But when a new emperor, Marcus Aurelius, was crowned, things began to heat up. Aurelius' rule brought in constant conflict and ended with him dying of sickness near the battlefield. But on his deathbed, he broke an important Roman tradition. Apollodorus. Yes, sire. Tell my son, Commodus, that I want him to be my successor. But sir, that would break tradition. Bleh. Well, Commodus, your father has named you emperor. Wait, what? Why? He's dead. Anyways, a 19-year-old emperor. Wow, can I get your autograph? My dad's dead! Oh! Aurelius broke the tradition of non-hereditary succession, meaning that the next emperor wouldn't have been his son. Instead, Commodus became emperor in 180 and was young, inexperienced, and definitely not fit to be emperor. He ruled Rome so badly that his own ministers assassinated him in 192, causing another civil war. Commodus was replaced by Severus, and in the 3rd century, 22 emperors took the throne. Why were there so many? Well, it would go a little something like this. Roman soldiers would fight each other to get an emperor to power, then they find out they didn't like that emperor and kill him. This process would repeat over and over until Diocletian took power. Also, while Rome was civil war, people from outside Rome, such as the Germans, posed a continuing threat and depleted Rome of its riches. Now, back to Diocletian. Diocletian achieved relative peace in Rome, but shared leadership with four people. Diocletian shared the title of emperor with Maximin, and power with two generals, Galerius and Constantius, who were the assistants and successors of the emperors. Rome was then split into East and West, like the U.S. in the 90s. Diocletian and Galerius ruled the Western Empire, and Maximin and Constantius ruled the East. But when Diocletian and Maximin retired, Rome again became engulfed in power struggles. That was until Constantine, the son of Constantius, became the sole leader of a reunified Rome in 324. He moved the Roman capital from Rome to Byzantium and renamed it to Constantinople, and in 325 made Christianity the official religion of Rome. When Constantine died, the empire was once again divided between east and west. In the east, there was constant conflict with the Persians, but they managed to survive for centuries more known as the Byzantium Empire. This was not the case for the west, however. The west had been struggling with Germanic tribes, and one time, the Vandals from Germany came to Rome and vandalized the city. It's actually where we get the word. Rome slowly fell, crumbling under the weight of its vast empire, with each province falling one by one. Britain in 410, Northern Africa in 430, Gaul in 450, and in 476, when a Germanic prince named Otto Vokar won control over the Roman army, he deposed the final Roman emperor, Romulus Augustus. Advocar was then named King of Italy, officially ending the Roman Empire. Like I said before, the East survived for centuries more, meaning the Roman Empire technically ended in 1453. But Byzantium was kind of like the Megamind II of Rome, so it doesn't count, okay? There was an actual sequel though, the Holy Roman Empire, but it wasn't the same as my glorious, beautiful, stupendous Rome. I know you're wondering, Lumbago, why did you make a fake history video and not real like the Canadian-American War? Because I felt like it. I'm trying to rob some right now. That low Jackie trying to rob some right now. I'm, I'm trying to rob some right now. That low Jackie trying to rob some right now. That you want to rob? Well, 